Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. So in this one I'm going to be showing you how you can wait for an element to exist in the DOM and as soon as it does exist do something. So as an example I've created this set timeout here and this is appending a new div to the DOM with an ID of new div after three seconds. So if I head over to the browser you'll see after a few seconds the text inside this new div appears. Now this is my own set timeout so if I want to do something immediately after this div is appended to the DOM I can do it right here so that's not complicated but what if it's a third-party script over which you have no control so you can't go into the set timeout like this so what you might try to do is something I've prepared below which is adding an event listener to the window listening out for the load event so that's when everything on the page has loaded and then what I'm going to do is select the new div and I'm going to try and add the name bordered to the class list and this is going to add a little bit of bordering to the element. So let's see how that works in the browser. If I refreshing now and you can see almost immediately I get an uncaught type error cannot read properties of null and the reason is that the end of page load event is still too early the new div still doesn't exist in the DOM. So one solution you could use here that would actually work but would be inefficient is to use set intervals. So to create a timer every second, you're going to try and access this element and then set the attribute. So let's see that in action now. So it would look a little bit like this, create the set interval, which accepts a function and I want this to be executed every second and I'm going to try exactly what I was doing here. So copy and paste that in and comment this out. And finally, I'm going to add a console log here so we can see it running every second. So let's see how this goes in the browser now. I'm hitting refresh now. And again, I'm getting an error and two errors uncaught type error cannot read properties of null and that's because the element still doesn't exist after one second or two seconds but on the third second it did exist and the border was added. Now this is problematic doing it this way because a we're not actually firing the function at the exact moment when the element hits the DOM and second every second we're searching the DOM for a new div element so that's inefficient. And just for completeness, if you were using this solution, then you'd want to clear the interval afterwards to prevent the behavior that it keeps running after the div is found. But I won't go into any more detail on this solution because there is a better way of doing all this, and that is using the mutation observer. So the special mutation observer object is natively available in JavaScript. And to create a new mutation observer object with it, you need to use the keyword new beforehand and then that's going to return a new observer object that we can use to start observing the DOM. Now inside the mutation observer parentheses you add a function and that function is going to run every time a change in the DOM occurs that you're listening out for. So we already know what we want to do. We want to add an element to the class list of new div. So I'm just going to copy and paste this from set interval here to save a little bit of time and I'll tidy this up. Okay, so we've created a new instance of mutation observer inside our observer variable and it's going to run this function every time a mutation occurs that we're looking out for. So how do you specify what you're looking out for? Well, you do that when you start running the observer. So I'm going to reference the observer object I've created and call the observe method on it. And inside the method call, I pass in two arguments. The first one is target, and the target indicates where you're looking for changes. So in this case, I'm going to be looking for changes in the entire DOM, and I'm going to pass in a configuration object that's going to specify what changes I'm looking out for. So let's start with the target. So I'll create that now. And in this case, I'm just going to use the query selector to select the body of this document. 
So the target is going to be the entire DOM. Now for the configuration object, so create a variable config, and that's going to store an object inside it. And the change I'm listening out for, or I want to listen out for, is a new element being added to the DOM. So the property I want to set to true in this case is child list true. So this specifies that I want to listen out for a change in the child list and I'm setting the target to the entire DOM. So I'm listening out for a change in children in the entire DOM and the new observer object I've created knows that because when I call it by calling the observe method, I'm passing in the target and the configuration. Now, before running, because there might be some other mutations in the DOM, other than the one that I'm interested in, I'm going to add an if statement inside this function that is fired every time there is a mutation. And I want to check whether the element that I'm interested in now exists. And if it does, and only then do I want to go ahead and run what's inside the if statement which is going to be, as before, editing the class list of this new element. And I will include the console log in there as well. So we see that when it runs. Now, the final thing you want to do, if this is all you want to do with the mutation observer, is to stop observing. So you can do that by calling the disconnect method on the observer instance that you've created. Okay, so I'm going to save this now and we'll see what this looks like in the browser. Okay, so over here in the browser, I've refreshed and now the element has hit the page and you can see that the border has been added and it was added instantly as it hit the page. So I'll refresh again so you can see. Okay, there's no delay in that border being added, at least not one that you could perceive. And as soon as that's being added, I'm disconnecting the observer. Okay, so that is how you can wait for an element to exist in the DOM and do something at the precise moment that it is appended. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And to see more content like this from us, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.